using heat to generate electricity or electricity to generate heat is a pretty integral part of modern life. This generally involves some fairly complicated moving machinery, but there is a rather interesting mechanism that allows for a direct and omnidirectional energy conversion. The thermoelectric effect. Almost every kind of power plant converts heat into electricity by boiling water to produce steam, which turns a turbine that generates electricity. The differences are really only in the fuel source, not the actual conversion process. You can then redirect that electricity into, say, a fridge to cool your food, or use it in an oven to heat your food. But what if you want to have a smartwatch powered by body heat, for example? You can't go strapping turbines to your wrist, so you'll need something a lot simpler. One half of the thermoelectric effect is called the Seebeck effect. Here we have two semiconductors and a heat source. As the heat is applied to one end of the pair of semiconductors, electrons within them gain energy and move towards the cooler end. Now, one of these semiconductors is a p-type semiconductor and the other an n-type semiconductor. The n-type has an excess of electrons and the p-type essentially has space to accept them. As heat is applied and the electrons begin to move, they flow from the n-types to the p-type semiconductor, and this flow of electrons is an electrical current. The voltage scales not with the temperature, but with the temperature differential, the difference in temperature between the hot side and the cold side. This pair of semiconductors with their metallic bridging connector is called a thermocouple. Now, the voltages produced are tiny, so in most cases, thermocouples are grouped together and connected to generate more usable power levels. Generating power from heat differentials is the Seebeck side of the coin. Generating heat differentials from power is the other side of the coin, and it's called the Peltier effect. If you apply a voltage to the same basic setup as before, you begin to transfer heat from the hot side of the junction to the cold side. Thermoelectric generators, which exploit the Seebeck effect, are one of the more common thermoelectric items. They function in a similar way to heat engines, such as internal combustion engines or a power plant's turbine generators, but they have the huge advantage of being solid state. They have no moving parts. I first came across a thermoelectric generator when I found one in this fan. It's designed to be placed on top of a wood-burning stove and circulate air to improve the heating efficiency of the stove. Heat from the stove radiates upwards into the thermoelectric generator, which produces a charge and this in turn powers the fan. Now, the Seebeck effect works with temperature differentials, not just outright heat. If the top and the bottom of the fan were the same temperature, and both sides of the semiconductors were the same temperature, a charge would not be produced. Therefore, the fan needs its top half to radiate away as much heat as possible so that it's cooler than the lower section. The fan's design helps to maximise this temperature differential. The base plate is smooth and simple, with a large surface area on the bottom to absorb heat. The top section is ribbed and contains a fair amount of material with a lot of surface area, ensuring that heat is rapidly radiated away. This keeps the top section cooler than the bottom section, one side of the semiconductor is cooler than the other, and the power flowing. From improving home heating to powering spacecraft, thermoelectric generators have found their way to other planets, and have even left our solar system. If you're designing a space probe or a rover to explore an alien planet, you really only have two options for electrical power. Solar, or radioisotope generators. Solar panels need sunlight, and these panels can be somewhat fragile, which makes solar a less practical choice sometimes. For higher resilience and for guaranteed operation, some space probes and rovers have utilised radioisotope generators, shortened to RTGs. These use the heat generated by radioactive material as it naturally decays. The heat is then harvested by thermoelectric generators. RTGs are where the thermoelectric generator's resilience and longevity really shine through. The Voyager 1 space probe, which has travelled nearly 23 billion kilometres over its 43 years of active service, utilises three RTGs for power. The voltage-generating capabilities of thermocouples vary with the heat differential they are exposed to. If there's a small differential, a small amount of power is generated. 
if the differential is larger, more power is generated. This relationship is well understood, and as such, it can be used to infer temperatures. Here we have a meat thermometer. Inside the probe is the hot side of a thermocoupled junction, and outside it is the cold junction. This works the same way as the thermocouple in our thermoelectric generator. Its parts are just a little more spread out. As the temperature increases at the probe, in relation to the temperature outside of it, a larger voltage is generated. This voltage is measured, and the corresponding temperature can then be calculated. You can also use the Peltier effect, applying voltage to transfer heat, to create a thermoelectric cooler. These devices are widely used in camping coolers, on account of their simplicity and compactness. Peltier coolers are also being considered to facilitate our exploration of the planet Mercury, in order to withstand its extremely hot conditions. One rover design uses a tungsten shield lined with Peltier coolers to radiate away the blistering heat which is enough to melt zinc. So that's the thermoelectric effect. Don't forget to subscribe. If you want to support my work and get a whole heap of extra content, you might consider supporting me on Patreon. You can find me at patreon.com forward slash the media world. You might also like my podcast. You can find links to it down below. Just search for the Media Ward podcast. <laughs>